Hello participants. Welcome to uh, the session of uh, awareness uh, which we are doing for all the applicants of CII ITC Sustainability Awards 2016. The objective of the webinar is to introduce you to the awards assessment process very briefly and then to take you through the online questionnaire and the various functionalities which are available in the online tool and this will be followed by question and answer sessions. So uh, how we are going to do this is that uh, I'm going to devote one hour and uh, some, some more time on uh, giving you a brief introduction on the awards, the assessment methodology and the other details of the online tool and uh, then we will take uh, your uh, questions online. So whatever are your questions, uh, you can keep uh, writing uh, and posting them on the question panel which will appear in your uh, webinar panel. As you all know, awards category uh, broadly consists of two main uh, categories, which is corporate excellence and domain excellence. Under corporate excellence, uh, there are three levels of recognition, business of the year, outstanding accomplishment, commendation for significant achievement. And under domain excellence, a company can apply for four of the mentioned uh, categories, which is uh, sustainable supply chain, corporate social responsibility, environment management, and biodiversity. Biodiversity is a new domain which we introduced in 2016. In domain excellence, there are two levels of recognition. So the topmost level of recognition is the excellence in that particular domain. This is followed by commendation for significant achievement, which is like a second runner up in the domain excellence category. In corporate excellence, uh, the topmost recognition is business of the year then outstanding accomplishment and then commendation for significant achievement. As you may already know, uh, the difference between corporate excellence and domain excellence is that, that when a company applies for corporate excellence, sustainability is assessed across all the functions of the organization. Whereas in domain excellence, sustainability is assessed only for that particular function or a relevant, uh, relevant vertical uh, which is more re most relevant to the domain in which it has applied for. So for example, if a company is applying for corporate social responsibility, the assessment will be only limited to the work that the organization is doing uh, in terms of its community and the social side. Moving further, just to give you a brief idea, especially to our uh, new applicants this year, uh, to give you an idea of what the awards process look like, so the awards process is broadly divided into four stages. We start with the application stage, which includes the registration period where you all, all of you fill up the application of intent and register for the awards. In the application of intent, you also choose which category of award you are, go, you are willing to apply and any other relevant and related service that you want to take up uh, with regards to award. The application stage also includes uh, your uh, time period when you are filling up your questionnaires and the submission of the questionnaire, which is the time period going on right now. And this is followed by the preliminary screening by the awards team. Preliminary screening is basically done to filter out any application which has not been submitted uh, in full or an application which is not worthy of uh, being uh, taken for the desk assessment stage. So any such application is filtered out during the preliminary screening by the awards team. After the application stage, we move to the desk assessment stage, which uh, mostly uh, takes place from mid of June and goes up till July end. In desk assessment stage, all our third party assessors, they assess the applications which have qualified for desk assessment stage and basis the assessment results that they submit to the awards team, they are presented to the jury and the jury decides the applications which are going for the next stage of assessment, which is a site visit, which is the third stage of assessment, on-site assessment. During this time, all the applications which have qualified for this stage, uh, their site visit is conducted and the assessors who had done the desk assessment 
of uh, these companies they visit their respective locations including the corporate offices as well as the manufacturing sites basis uh, the, the the purpose of on site assessment is basically to gather evidence and uh, verify against the information given by the applicants in the questionnaire and basis this the assessors finalize their assessment and uh, submit their results to the awards team these results are again presented to our jury who decides the winner uh, winners of uh, of that year during this time we also conduct assessor recognition survey where all our assessors who have participated in the assessment in a particular cycle their feedback is taken both from the peer assessors as well as the applicants whom they have visited this basically uh, becomes a grounding for the recognition exercise that we do for our assessors the last stage is the closure stage which uh, includes the announcement of winners and the feedback report which is given to all our applicants who participate in the awards process the uh, the the award ceremony is scheduled for 5th of december this year this is for your information and the feedback report uh, process starts after the ceremony is concluded and uh, mostly feedback reports are shared in uh, in in january next year and that goes up till february 2017 we now move to uh, to give you an idea on what uh, what are the criteria which are taken in consideration for sustainability performance assessment Uh, there are four layers to the performance assessment we first start with the sustainable excellence model to this uh, there are aspect which are assessed and finally there is a scoring logic first to give you a brief uh, overview of what does the sustainability excellence model look like so when a company is assessed uh, by our assessors there are three verticals or three pillars that are taken in consideration the enablers results learning and review here i would like to give you an idea that the sustainability excellence model is an adaptation of efqm business excellence model efqm is european foundation for quality management which stands for business excellence assessment for the organizations and this model has been adapted from uh, the business excellence model so here you would see that the pillars of excellence are same as what uh, are there in the business excellence model enablers basically look at those uh, side of the company which are where the organization is taking steps uh, to reach a particular goal or targets it has set for itself and hence enablers include uh, components of leadership how is the leadership in the organization driving the uh, the company towards achieving its goals and targets how is it engaging with its internal as well as external stakeholders what are the partnership models Uh, how is it mobilizing its key resources towards achieving its uh, results now these key resources includes uh, financial as well as infrastructural technological all the kind of key resources that the organization has put into place and finally the processes so how institutionalized and systematic processes the, that the organization has in place to achieve its results all the questions that you will see in your questionnaire are formulated around this entire framework so you will see there are questions related to processes in each of the aspects there are questions related to leadership there are question related to partnerships and engagement with internal and external stakeholders as well as mobilization of resources on the res uh, on the results side we basically look at what are the results that the organization has achieved whether the results achieved are uh, as per the planned results or the organization has overachieved or underachieved those results what are the trends so in most of the result questions we are asking for trend questions we don't ask for a particular year or only one year figures because assessment on result basically looks at the trends and how the organization has fared on those trends the results uh, includes the financial performance results as well as all the other related results so for example uh results of engagement with your internal as well as external stakeholders results of uh, uh on the environment domain results on supply chain all of those results will also take be taken in consideration in the result pillar of the excellence model 
in the learning and innovation or learning and review we uh, basically look at how is the organization learning from its existing processes and how is it improvising or making improvements or innovations in order to improve its entire performance as you can see this arrow is coming out from results and going towards enablers so this is like a this basically is closing the loop of the excellence model that until unless uh, the organization challenges its status quo it will not be able to further improve or create new threshold or benchmarks for itself so you will see that there are questions or indicators regarding learning and review as well on all the aspects just to give you a broad idea when we are looking at the sustainability excellence model equal weight is given to enablers as well as results so there is a 50% weight which is allocated to enablers side of the organization and 50% weight which is allocated to the results side of the organization within enablers and results there is a further allocation of weights which uh, is displayed here these details you can also find in the guidance document which is readily available on the link which is uh, available on the instructions page of your questionnaire if you want to gather more details on each of these attribute you can always read the guidance document which give a more detailed description of each of these attributes which are mentioned here now as you have seen in the previous slide the second layer of assessment is the aspect aspect basic broadly means what are the key areas around which the organization's performance is assessed when an organization is applying for corporate excellence its performance is assessed across 15 aspects so all these aspects starting from f1 and going up till f15 all these aspects will be assessed if an organization has applied for corporate excellence category of the awards if an organization has applied for any of the domains then the relevant domain excellence category will apply so for example if uh, the application is for corporate social responsibility the organization will only be required to fill the csr aspect of uh, of this framework in supply chain only supply chain aspect will matter in environment management two aspects will matter product responsibility and environment management and in biodiversity only biodiversity aspect will be uh, given for you to give your details on compliance to regulation is a common aspect across uh, corporate excellence as well as domain excellence and hence you will see this uh, as uh, available to you uh, for either of the categories uh, an important point here is that compliance to regulation is a context building aspect it is not scored it is basically Uh, to help uh, our assessors understand what are the regulations which are applicable to the organization specifically related to its sector and hence this aspect is not scored all the other aspects from f1 to f15 are the aspects on which the scoring takes place now going on to the awards questionnaire uh, you all must have received an email to access the awards questionnaire uh, just to give you a broad point here the awards questionnaire can be used and can be accessed by multiple people in your organization so this mail that you have received in your inboxes from uh, several days ago you can forward this may email to all your respective colleagues who will be involved in filling up the awards questionnaire and by clicking on the link which is mentioned here multiple people can fill up the awards questionnaire at the same time when you click on uh, the awards questionnaire you are basically taken to the instructions page instruction page has uh, mainly uh, all the main instruction points which you as an applicant have to take in consideration please do not skip the instruction page go through each and every point it is important for you and for your understanding of the awards questionnaire i'll also show you the live instructions page so when you click on the questionnaire you are taken to this kind of an instruction page which has all the relevant instructions 
the important point which I wanted to highlight uh, for all of you is to go through the guidance document. Its link is available on the instructions page. You can download the guidance document and keep it ready for your reference anytime while you're filling up the questionnaire. This has all the details of the sustainability excellence framework which I talked about. It has also the details mentioned around the weights which are allocated to the questionnaire as well as the various aspects that we have uh, in the awards questionnaire. Uh, for all our applicants who are repeat applicants from previous year, the, as, as in those who had applied in 2015 and are again applying in the same category in 2016, they will receive a populated questionnaire link. So when they bas uh, basically go to their questionnaire link, their questionnaire will already be populated with the information that they had submitted last year to us. All they have to do is to go through that information again, review it, and see if they want to make any changes. Uh, they also have to input data relevant for this year and the future years and uh, review the questionnaire and then submit it. This feature will be available going forward. So all our applicants who are participating this year and would like to participate next year, this feature will also be available to you going forward. Another important point which uh, we have seen uh, last year being missed by most of the applicant is the use of additional information box. In your questionnaire in section F, for each of the aspect, there is an additional information box available. If there is any information which you, seem, which you feel that is relevant for the aspect that you're filling in, but doesn't get covered in the questions that we have asked in that aspect, you can utilize this information box to fill in the information that you would like to. So you can type in your data and you can save it. Any text box which is available in the questionnaire has a word limit of 750 words. This is applicable to the additional information box, the descriptive box, the management description, and any other section in the questionnaire which is of descriptive nature. So please utilize this additional information box for your benefit. This also creates a context to the assessor uh, around the questions that you have answered and also gives you an opportunity to talk more about the work that you are doing beyond the questions that we are asking. This is going to be in your advantage if you use this additional information box effectively. As you can see, there are uh, several sections here, uh, or each of these sections has a different role. The most important point for you here is that section B is a section of statement of authenticity and note of approval. Please fill this section after you have filled up the entire questionnaire, reviewed it, or your senior management has to review it. They have done the review. Only then uh, put your comments and put your details here because once you save this information, it will not be changed. And also the purpose of this section is that you have read and you have filled up the information and it is true to the nature of the company and you're giving your approval on it. So it is suggested that you fill up this section only in the end, just before you're making a submission of your questionnaire. The assessment period uh, cutoff date is March 31st, 2016. This means that we are following the financial, financial year calendar and so uh, as an organization, you need to furnish your data from April 2015 to March 2016. In case if there is any information which is submitted after March 2016, then that will not be taken in consideration uh, in the assessment. If uh, your company follows calendar year instead of financial year, then that can be taken in consideration provided you put a comment in the additional information box in the beginning and let the assessors know that the calendar year is being followed in the organization. While you're filling up the questionnaire, you would see that there is this session timeout clock which keeps ticking every now and then. Uh, and uh, I know uh, some of you have raised this issue with us while you're filling up this questionnaire that your data doesn't get saved. Please make sure that you adhere to the session timeout. This doesn't mean that you only have 
30 minutes to fill the entire questionnaire. It means that if you don't save your data or you don't move to the next page, your session will be logged out. The session timeout of 30 minutes has been kept for the security reasons and for other technical reasons. Whenever you move from one section to the other, you will see that the clock automatically revises its time back to 30 minutes. So even if you're not saving your data, but you're moving between sections or between pages, the clock will continuously keep revising its time to 30 minutes. So you don't have to keep saving your data also all the time. Okay, I'll just come back to this page. Uh, moving further on the next point, there is also a functionality available this year for mark for review option. Now this functionality is available in section F and against each question that you will see in section F. The purpose of this functionality is that if there is any question which you have started writing but you still want to come back to this question for a revisit or for a review, you can mark this question as mark for review. And this will keep showing as mark for review and will not be accepted as an answered answer by the tool until and unless you uncheck this functionality. So once you have revisited it and reviewed it and finalized it and saved it, then the tool will uh, mark it as answered and then you can submit your questionnaire. But if there are any questions that you want to save for later changes, then you please utilize this functionality. With me, when the questionnaire is being filled by multiple people, this functionality can again be used by uh, your colleagues. And if a reference has to be given by another colleague, please mark it for review. So, and you can always tell the question number to your colleagues uh, that in a particular aspect, certain question is marked for your review. Please look at it, answer it, and complete it. That way also mark for review can be utilized. As you can see, we are back on the tool and you can see the, uh, the clock has revised itself to 30 minutes. So every time, as I was mentioning, you move from one page to the other or between sections, the clock keeps revising its time to 30 minutes. It is important that you keep saving your work because the tool is not equipped with auto save feature. And hence, it is important that a manual saving is uh, done every time you have inputted any information or before you close your page. So please keep saving the uh, information manually. We were facing some technical problems last week and some applicants have reported that technical uh, issues. Uh, we apologize for uh, those issues. Uh, there were some uh, technical issues that were cropping up on our server. We have overhauled the server on the weekend and uh, issues related to save and other uh, features have been resolved. Hopefully, we are not going to face uh, these issues again in future. Last but not the least, we have also introduced the application preview functionality this year. So this functionality will again be available on the last page, which is the review and submit page. And again, will get activated only after you have submitted the entire sorry, filled the entire questionnaire. Before that time, you will not see the application preview button at all. Once your questionnaire is fully filled up, you will automatically see two buttons. One will be of application preview and the second button will be of submit questionnaire. So before you submit your questionnaire, you can uh, click on application preview button. It will take you through uh, to an online PDF. You can download your PDF for future references or to circulate it within your organization for any final approvals or any last minute changes. And basis that any changes that you want to make, you can make in the questionnaire and then you can submit your questionnaire. Just uh, again emphasizing on the guidance document, the link which is available to all of you on the instructions page. Please go through the guidance document once to understand the assessment. This will also help you in framing answers to the descriptive questions uh, which are available in each of the aspects. Uh, please frame your answers understanding the sustainability excellence framework that we have in place. And for that, you can always refer to the guidance document to get more details on each and every attribute.
Now, uh, moving to the various sections of the awards questionnaire, uh, there are uh, six sections which are available, starting from section A. Section A is your registration information. Most of the uh, registration information, if you go on section A, is pulled from application of intent. So whatever you have inputted in your application of intent during the registration period is uh, automatically pop populated in the first two sections of the, of the section A. Later, next two or three sections are to be populated by you with the details of highest ranking officials, contact person for sustainability awards, and the alternate contact person, if you at all want to mention those details. So this is purely your registration information. Also make sure that the contact person mentioned here for sustainability award is the nodal contact point for us going forward uh, for the desk assessment coordination as well as for the site assessment coordination in case if the application reaches that stage of site assessment. Section B I have already explained. Moving to section C. Section C um, is an important section from the point of view of setting the context of the company. This section basically asks the details of the ownership profile of the company, the product portfolio of the company, what is the turnover of each of its major products, what are the top competitors, and um, it also asks for the vision, mission, value, and various policies that the organization has in place, and the employee information for last three years. In the product portfolio section also you would see that we are asking for three years numbers. Section C is not a, a section which is going to be scored. All the sections that we have from section A to section E are context building sections. They basically helps our, help our assessors understand the organization uh, business, its nature and sector more in detail and only section F where the sustainability related information is given by the applicants is where the actual assessment and the scoring takes place. So whatever you put in section C and other sections of section A to E will help our assessors understand your business much better. The important uh, part of section C is scope of application. Scope of application basically helps you define boundary of your application. You would see a line saying application is for company or application is for unit already mentioned for you. This information is picked up from the application of intent. So during application of intent, if you have defined your scope of application as a company, you would see company mentioned here. If you have defined it as a unit, you will see unit mentioned here. Further to this, you will have to provide your scope. So if your scope um, uh, basically means that you're defining uh, boundaries, uh, which means that if your application is for a unit and one single unit has applied for, um, for assessment, then you need to mention the relevant activities of that unit and what is the location of that unit as is where geographical location of that unit. If it is for a company and there are multiple units or uh, multiple businesses which are involved, you will accordingly have to mention the broad activities and the broad locations uh, around which the assessment will take place. The relevance of this part is that basis that information that you're going to provide here, your assessment of section F will be related to the boundary that you set in scope of application. Also, if your company qualifies for site assessment stage, then basis the major location and the geographies that you have mentioned in this um, section that will define that where exactly the site visit is going to take place. That is decided by the team of assessors. Section D is management description section. For our repeat applicants, uh, you would remember that this was an executive summary section. So till last year, the uh, section D was an executive summary section that has been replaced by management description. The relevance of management description is important because we want uh, our, our applicants to basically state that how they are managing their sustainability risks and challenges, what are the future plans of uh, the management going forward uh, in terms of mitigation of those risks and in, and in terms of the opportunities uh, that they have identified. So this management description section is very similar to 
what is available in the director's report or the annual report of companies. You can take ideas from there and you can accordingly articulate this management description uh, section. The description of management description section is already given in these four or five lines. Please read this thoroughly before you start uh, to attempt to answer this particular section of management description. From the purpose of assessment, whatever you write here will help our assessors understand the key sustainability risks and challenges which are important to the sector of your organization. Uh, that is the main idea behind management description. And what are the strategies or mitigation plans that the organization has in place to uh, deal with those identified sustainability risks and challenges. The next section is uh, the section on terminology and abbreviation. In the entire questionnaire, if you're using any terms or any abbreviations, you can give their explanation in, uh, in this table. You can keep adding more rows here. And you can always, uh, wherever there, there are table questions available in section E or in section C, the add more row functionality is available against all such kind of tables. So please utilize them. There are maximum 10 rows that can be added to this table. This is now followed by section F. In section F, you will see this opens up into 15 aspects. If you have applied for domain excellence, only the relevant aspect will open up. No other aspect will open up for you. Uh, as you can see, against each of these aspects, there are questions. And each aspect, uh, so for example, corporate governance has around 30 questions. You can move within corporate governance by using the pagination feature that we have. So you can go to the last section of corporate governance by going to page four or the middle section by going on page three. Before I uh, take you through the details of section F, there are a few points which I want to highlight again. Uh, do, when you're filling up the questionnaire, you can choose to uh, start from any section you may want to. There is no uh, flow, so it's not necessary that you can move to section C only after you have answered section A. However, it is suggested that you start answering the question from section A. That will also help you in linking uh, and creating interlinkages within the questionnaire. Wherever there is an asterisk marked in red, that particular question or that particular section is mandatory in section A to E. Section F is a mandatory section and all the questions which are there in Section F have to be mandatorily answered by the applicant. If you are saving your page and um, if there is any question which is left unanswered, tool will automatically highlight that question that has been left unanswered and you cannot move or proceed to the next page until unless you have answered that question. However, for the sake of uh, movement from one section to the other. If you don't want to answer that particular question at that time, you can move to the next section instead of moving to the next page. Or you can always keep that question as mark for review by utilizing that feature. And then the response will get saved. As I've already mentioned, please use the additional information box to your benefit and provide information wherever you are doing more work and want to highlight something which is not captured by the questions in that particular aspect. Additional information box is not mandatory to answer. So if you have uh, not no additional information that you want to provide, you can always leave the additional information box blank. Again, uh, the word limit against all the descriptive questions uh, and uh, the additional information box is 750 words. Uh, for repeat applicants, I've already highlighted that the questionnaire will be populated. All they have to do is to review their questionnaire, make changes that they want to. Uh, from 2015 to 2016, there are a few changes that we have done in the questionnaire. One major change is that we have included five-year future uh, trends. 
So you will have to populate your plan for next five years against the result questions wherever we are asking. In case if you have not planned for a particular indicator, you can always leave those uh, fields blank. That in itself will indicate to the assessors that uh, you have not done the future planning for that particular indicator. If you have done three-year planning, you can accordingly put in the data for three years, two years, or one year. So for uh, as many years that you have data, you can put in the data there. There are several new questions that we have added this year in addition to what was there in 2015. All the new and major questions that have been added are highlighted with a new tag, and you, have, um, you must have already seen these questions. There are also changes to the questions that we have done. These changes are not highlighted because these are mostly cosmetic uh, changes or language changes that we have done. This is the feedback that we have received from all of you in 2015. There are various functionalities which are available in, in your questionnaire. Please utilize these functionalities for efficient use of the questionnaire and to reduce your time and effort across the questionnaire. There is a pagination facility which is available. So within an aspect, if you want to move from one question to the other, you can, uh, you can actually see one that how long that particular aspect is, whether it is running into one page or several pages, as in more than one. We just saw that corporate governance is running into four pages. And accordingly, you can move uh, from page one to page four if at all required. Uh, I've already talked about mark for review. Other than uh, mark for review functionality, let me just take you through mark for review in the review and submit page. So if there are any questions which uh, you want to mark for review, say for example, in corporate governance, you're marking CG01 as mark for review because you don't have answer to this question right now and you want to come back to it later. And CG02. You can save your work, whatever you have filled up. And if you go to review and submit page, you will see against corporate governance, there are two questions which are marked for review. If you click on these questions, a pop-up box will open up, which will show you what are those questions which are marked for review. There is also a hyperlink to these questions. You can click on these questions and the tool will automatically take you to the questions which, are, which you have marked for review. Similarly, there, are, uh, there is a functionality available in review and submit page on unanswered question. If you click on this number, you will see what are those questions which have not been answered by you. It will give you a list of all the questions which remain to be unanswered. There is no hyperlink here but the table will give you the question number and the description of the questions to give you a fair idea what are the questions which remain to be unanswered. Moving on uh, to sustainability aspects and uh, to give you an idea of what is included in each of the aspect beginning with corporate governance uh, as I was as I had already introduced to you the sustainability excellence framework you will see that the structure of each aspect is uh, inclusive of the enablers and results so there are certain indicators which are more enabler driven and there are certain indicators which are more results driven for example in corporate governance you must have seen all those who have applied in corporate excellence category of the awards. To them, corporate governance aspect is available. So under enablers, we ask for indicators like what is the governance structure of the organization? What are the gender diversity uh, processes that the organization has taken in consideration? It also asks for the details on board level committees and the functions that it is undertaking. If there is a board level sustainability committee at all, and on the results side, we are asking for the, the disclosures on corporate governance and on the boards or the senior management involvement in the review of sustainability performance. There are certain questions in corporate governance which were reflected last year on uh, sustainability risks and challenges. 
that have been moved from corporate governance to risk management and additional questions regarding sustainability risks and challenges have also been added in the risk management aspect. Similarly, if I go to the next aspect, business ethics. Business ethics basically looks at uh, what are the various code of conduct that the organization has in place uh, to deal with the issues of business ethics. What is the policy? Coverage means that does your business ethic apply only internally or externally as well? It also asks for uh, any dedicated person that you have employed as a business ethics and a compliance officer. Uh, what are the training mechanisms that the organization has in place? How are you communicating your policies and uh, your mechanisms around business ethics internally to your employees? And the related question on result is that how many employees are trained on business ethics? Then we also have a question where we are asking that how is your senior management involvement on business ethics? Basically, we are asking that does the board have an oversight on the business ethic issues at all or not? And then on the results side, we are asking for details on uh, the cases reported and any issues reported against uh, the cases on, say, for example, corruption and bribery, human rights, health and safety, and so on. When we go to risk management, the risk management, uh, we are asking for um, if the organization has a framework in place for risk management. Uh, you would see that most the structure of the aspect is similar across all the aspects. So we are beginning with the aspect with the process related questions. So our first question in most of the aspect is a policy related question or a process related question where we are asking that whether the applicant has a relevant policy for that aspect or a process for that aspect at all or not. And then we move on to uh, the other relevant process related question and then to results followed by the learning and review questions. So this structure is followed across all the aspects. Going back to risk management, uh, there are indicators where we are asking for details on the risk identification, assessment, and response. How is the organization assessing its uh, risk? If it is um, deploying any particular tools to identifying uh, risks, so for example, risk maps or sensitivity and stress testing. Then we are also asking that, uh, we are asking two main questions on business risk and sustainability risk. So uh, what are the top three long-term risks that the organization has identified for itself and the three sustainability risks that the organization has for itself. We are also asking for question on non-compliance. So if, how is the organization identifying non-compliance uh, around risk management? and uh, the process of non-compliance has to be given in detail. On key resources, we are asking for details on the deployment of a dedicated person uh, for risk management. We are also asking for uh, details on the investment that the organization has made to, the, uh, to deal with the identified risks. We have introduced questions which are asking for details on risk culture. So what are the strategies that the organization has in place to uh, enhance an effective risk culture in the organization? Finally, on the results side, we are asking for uh, the number of cases of non-compliance that the organization has experienced in last five years. And on learning and innovation, we are asking for details on the process that uh, the organization has in place to measure the effectiveness of risk management. Transparency and disclosure. The idea of transparency and disclosure is to understand that how is the organization disclosing its sustainability performance uh, through various disclosure mechanisms. So uh, an organization may be doing an integrated reporting or a sustainability reporting or uh, adhering to the SEBI mandate of uh, BRR and so on. So whatever is your disclosure mechanism, you can accordingly 
choose the best answer from the limit uh, the questions that we have in place so it's, uh, transparency and disclosure doesn't necessarily mean here that you are doing a sustainability a gri based sustainability reporting yes there is an option available for that if you're doing that well and good if you're not doing it you can there are other options also available uh, through which you may be disclosing your sustainability performance you can accordingly choose that option then we also have questions in transparency and disclosure on audit that and assurance that um, uh, how is the assurance of sustainability reporting being done whether it is done by an internal audit team or by an external audit team we are also asking for materiality analysis in transparency and disclosure that how the, uh, is the organization conducting materiality analysis before uh, taking up the disclosure and identifying key material issues uh, to uh, identify uh, the sustainability risks and challenges and accordingly um, strategizing uh, your plan to mitigate those risks and challenges and the results side the related question around materiality is, uh, is to state three key material issues that have been identified we also have a question on coverage of your sustainability report coverage here means the operational coverage of the report so for example if you have uh, if you have applied for a company and you have 10 manufacturing sites and you are disclosing your information only in your sustainability report or in your disclosure only for five uh, manufacturing sites then your uh, coverage is 50 percent so it's by operations that you have to take in consideration when you're answering this question on coverage finally we are asking a question on feedback and improvement where we are uh, asking for a, a process of how is the organization receiving and recording its feedback from various stakeholders about its uh, transparency and disclosure and what is the organization doing post that feedback in order to improvise its processes. Moving further, we are looking at the financial performance. For uh, our repeat applicants, I would just like to briefly mention that there are certain indicators that we have removed from financial performance. And, uh, and now you would see that uh, there is an introduction of ratios in financial performance. So there are several ratios that we have included. This is also basis the feedback that we have received from applicants. We're going to improvise the financial performance further, but for this year, this is how it looks like. So there are uh, indicators which are asking for absolute numbers for five years, which are listed here. And then there are seven or eight ratios that we are asking uh, from the organization. The entire financial performance is a trend-based uh, aspect. So we are asking for five-year past trends as well as the future trend data for five years. The next aspect is employee development. Here, uh, the focus is on uh, how is the organization engaging with its employees? What are the various training and capacity building mechanisms and initiatives that the organization has in place to, uh, to develop its employees? We are also asking for performance evaluation information. The reason for asking for performance evaluation is because a lot of training needs and capacity building needs are identified during performance evaluation. So it's important to know that uh, what is the mechanism of performance evaluation, whether there is a 360 degree uh, performance evaluation taking place or peer to peer performance evaluation taking place, because that builds a grounding for the identification of further employee development needs. Again, uh, on the leadership side, we are asking for questions which uh, basically looks at the top management involvement uh, in employee development process, that how is the top management reviewing and monitoring the effectiveness of employee development practices. On the results side, we are asking for what are the types and scope and coverage of training programs. Types doesn't necessarily need to include a specific sustainability related training because we are not looking at that any kind of training which goes beyond on the job training for employees is going to build the skills and capacity of an employee and will also lead to effective work management all those kind of trainings can be included in in this question where we are asking for type and scope of training scope of training basically means that at what what which is the level 
of, uh, of your employees who are being trained for this particular type of training. Then we are also asking for the results of uh, employee surveys and the performance evaluation surveys. Stakeholder engagement basically uh, looks at the engagement mechanisms that the organization has in place to engage with its stakeholders beyond employees. So all your other stakeholders like your customers, your investors, community, government, NGO or any other relevant stakeholder, how, I, how as an organization you are engaging with them, what is your process of first of all identification of your stakeholders, prioritization of stakeholders and uh, engagement method. We have a question, a tab tabular question where we are asking for uh, details on what are the mechanisms of engagement, what is an outcome and what is the benefit derived. Uh, please include the relevant stakeholders there. If any stakeholder is missing from the list which is mentioned there, you can always include it in others. And in your additional information box, you can give an indication of this question and mention that what does others include for this particular question. We, uh, in stakeholder engagement, we are looking at two kinds of surveys uh, and we are asking that what is the frequency of these surveys, employee satisfaction surveys as well as customer satisfaction surveys and the related result questions on the survey results uh, is being asked later in the same aspect. We are also um, asking about uh, the key concerns that the stakeholders have raised in last one year and how has the organization responded to them uh, and what are the corrective measures and actions that the organization has taken to against these key concerns and key topics. The next aspect is human rights. Here again you would see this is a very uh, small aspect and uh, the aspect begins with the policy on human rights whether the organization has a policy. It's not necessary that the organization has a policy on human rights. It may be included uh, in either code of conduct or in some or the other manner. If that is so, you can accordingly choose the relevant options mentioned in the answer options and give the details of uh, where this policy is mentioned. Uh, then um, we are also asking for various areas of human rights. So for example, child labor, forced labor and so on. So whichever area your policy or your mechanisms exist, you can accordingly choose that area and you can respond. If you are a signatory to any of the international frameworks, uh, you can accordingly choose from the list which is given in question number three. And it is also asking for coverage of human rights policy. So does your human rights policy extends to your supply chain? partners, does it extend or is it limited only to your employees, uh, does it also go uh, to your partnership uh, or joint ventures or your NGOs, you can accordingly choose the answer to whomsoever it may apply. On the leadership side, we are asking for how is, what is the top management oversight on human rights and what is that approach of maintaining an oversight on human rights issues. We are also asking, on the results side, we are asking for the cases that uh, may have been reported against each of the human rights area which is mentioned and later we are also asking uh, for the resolution that uh, that the organization has given against these complaints. On learning and innovation again we have a question where we are uh, where the indicator is basically asking that uh, how is the organization evaluating its mechanisms and its approaches to human rights and how it is improving on its existing systems. Further, we have health and safety where we are again looking at various policies and strategies that uh, it may have in place to deal with health and safety uh, challenges. Uh, what, are, what is the emergency preparedness plan in place and how it is engaging and communicating with its internal stakeholders on health and safety uh, issues. On the results side, we are asking for broad indicators on injury frequency rates, fatality rates and occupational illness frequency rate and there are few more indicators which are mentioned in your questionnaire. 
On the review side, we are asking how is the organization um, maintaining an oversight on health and safety and how it's improvising its processes to uh, further improve uh, this aspect. CSR is one aspect where we have brought in major changes from last year. All our repeat applicants would already see that. Uh, we now have specific question. We, we have question, of course, on policy uh, on CSR. And uh, we now have specific question on uh, the process uh, by which the organization is uh, looking at outcomes and outputs and benefits and impacts for, from the CSR activities. Related questions we also have on the results side where we are asking applicants to mention details on the outcome achieved from the CSR activities undertaken from and the, the outcome impact achieved from the CSR activity. So there are different questions uh, and uh, different, question, uh, different questions are asking for uh, outcome, output and impact. So please answer those questions understanding the definition of outcome, output and impact and uh, only then um, uh, the assessment uh, will be done uh, or it will be a fair assessment for you. So don't um, confuse between outcome and impact. We, uh, in CSR, we are also asking about the key resource mobilization from the investment point of view. So how much investment or spend uh, the organization has done against various CSR activities that it has undertaken. This again is a trend question where we are asking for future five-year trend or uh, and next five-year trend. If your CSR activity that you are mentioning is recent start, as in you just started it like two or three years back, you can accordingly provide figures and in the additional information box you can provide a comment against this question that when the CSR activity was started by the organization. Moving on then we have supply chain. This is a fairly big aspect and there are several new questions which we have added to the supply chain. Supply chain uh, looks at the engagement of an organization with its supply chain partners. Here supply chain goes beyond the suppliers. So please ensure that the information that you provide and if an organization you are, you are working and engaging beyond your suppliers, you accordingly provide information. So if you are engaging with your vendors, with your distributors, with your um, other stakeholders in your entire supply chain back uh, upstream and downstream you can accordingly provide data so the term supply chain doesn't mean that the information pertains only to suppliers it means that all your stakeholders upstream and downstream and your engagement with them has to be given in the in this aspect Now here again, uh, when we are asking for policy on supply chain, we are also asking for its coverage. Coverage uh, basically uh, has, a uh, has a list of your suppliers, your tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 suppliers and the other uh, supply chain partners that you may have including your vendors, distributors, franchisees, retailers or any other uh, sup uh, supply chain partner that may be important from your sector point of view. Then uh, we are asking that how, from, the, from the sustainability perspective, what are the issues that are covered in your supply chain? So whether there are environmental issues, uh, child labor issues, forced labor issues, and so on included in your supply chain at all or not. Then we have questions where we are asking for suppliers audit. How are you auditing your suppliers? Uh, what is the frequency of audit? What is the target for audit. We are also looking at that as an organization are you doing a capacity building uh, exercise for your supply chain partners? Are you engaging with them? Are you helping them uh, get accustomed to uh, sustainability and helping them uh, build a sustainable business? And uh, if you have such initiatives then you can illustrate and mention these initiatives in the relevant questions in, the, in this aspect. We are also asking for, again, from the key resources point of view, if you have a dedicated person looking after uh, supply chain. 
on the results side we are looking at various sustainability goals that you have for your supply chain so sustainability goals for your organization may be different for the goals that you have set for your supply chain please make sure that in this question you mention the goals that you have set for your supply chain uh, we are again asking for the capacity building coverage as in out of your entire supply chain uh, universe what is the coverage as in how many you have covered and how many you intend to cover in next few years audit of supplier site how many you have done and again what is the future forecast and finally the review question where we are asking that uh, how is how as an organization you are reviewing your mechanisms towards engagement with your supply chain and how you are improvising in supply chain again we have a lot of additional questions which we have included this year uh, they are all tagged with a new tag uh, on the right hand side against these question for repeat applicants these questions are not populated they will appear as blank questions product responsibility is an extension of environment management here we are asking for uh, the commitment to sustainable products we are also we also have questions on life cycle analysis and uh, the result of life cycle analysis we have questions on non compliance and customer complaints and health and safety impacts of uh, the products that the organization has in place environment management is a fairly uh, big aspect with 53 or 52 questions in place and um, the the aspect again moves from policy to processes to uh, capacity building to the ghg emissions and nox and sox emissions uh, to the compliance uh, whether the organization is adhering to uh, the regulations or if there are any non compliance and related fines which it has uh, uh, which it has paid and lastly it is concluded by a review question now uh, across all these aspect one important point is that if there are any indicators which are not applicable to you as an organization due to the nature of your business you can utilize the not applicable option which is available against each of the questions so each question you will see that there is a not applicable option available this is again an introduction that we have done in 2016 this was not available last year please provide a justification against the not applicable option and this just justification will be assessed by the assessors so uh, please ensure that if you are choosing not applicable uh, you have to provide and justify the reason of not applicable with a description here if your justification for not applicable is correct then this question will not be scored for you at all that is this will not be counted in the number of questions against which the scoring of your organization will take place and hence the justification that you provide in the descriptive box becomes very important finally we have the aspect on biodiversity uh, most of you must have seen that biodiversity has been extended and has been made more exhaustive this year the reason being that biodiversity as a domain has is also been introduced in the domain excellence category of awards and um, uh, the last year biodiversity aspect was very limited in terms of the results uh, and the result related indicators that we are asking so if you are taking if you have initiatives against biodiversity beyond tree plantation please make sure that you understand biodiversity while you are answering the questions if you are answering the questions only from the point of view of tree plantation then that is not a biodiversity exercise if your tree plantation exercise has also is been undertaken with a biodiversity impact then only it can be considered as a biodiversity initiative so please make sure that you understand biodiversity which goes beyond environment management and then you start to attempt this aspect uh here again in biodiversity we are asking for the, uh, the policies or 
the long term plan that the organization has in place for uh, for biodiversity initiatives uh, what is the governance mechanism uh, that the organization has in place as in what is the governance structure uh, to look at biodiversity related issues within an organization we also have questions on nature conservation activities for example green belt development so please look at these questions most of these questions will apply to most of the companies who have applied for uh, the awards uh, that if there are nature conservation activities carried out by the organization then we are asking for long term biodiversity management plans that the organization has long term plan basically means a plan which uh, is at least 3 to 5 years is looking at the horizon of 3 to 5 years there are other questions where we are asking for uh, how is the organization evaluating its impact on the activities products and services on uh, on biodiversity uh, just want to make sure uh, that you understand this point that even if you're not operating in a high biodiversity area you can still have biodiversity impact and hence you should not um, say that biodiversity is not applicable to you because you don't operate in a high biodiversity area biodiversity also applies to the service sector it sector banking sector in uh, various ways so please understand how is biodiversity applicable to you and how are your operations affecting the biodiversity and if you have taken any initiative from that angle which can be included in biodiversity aspect on the result side we are asking for that what are the biodiversity impacts that the organization has taken in consideration and what are the dependencies when we are looking at biodiversity we are looking at ecosystem services also so all the dependencies uh, will be are related to the ecosystem services and hence uh, you should have a clear understanding of what are the related ecosystem services that uh, that biodiversity has in place then we have questions where we are asking for evaluation of impact on biodiversity and finally we are asking for what are the initiatives that are undertaken by the organization to improve its biodiversity and then it is concluded by a learning and review question this is followed by compliance to regulation which is the last aspect compliance to regulation is followed is divided into three uh major sections that is the economic regulations environment regulations and social regulations so whichever it's not uh, necessary that all that that the entire list is applicable to you as an organization whichever is the um uh, applicable regulation you can take against that regulation now before i move to the next section i just want to highlight couple of points not applicable is as an option i have already explained against each question you also have a no information available uh, item uh, or an option available you can always utilize this option in case if you don't have information against an indicator so the indicator may be applicable to you but you don't have information against it in that case you can choose no information available in case the indicator is not applicable to you because of the nature of the business you can choose not applicable option and provide justified reasons here after you have filled up the entire section f you can move to review and submit page review and submit page is like a facilitation page for the applicants this page gives you an idea of what is complete and what remains to be uh, completed from your end so all the section it gives you section wise information from section a to e section f is further divided into this entire table where it gives information against each of these aspect what are the total questions how many have been answered how many remains to be answered how many are review questions and if you have given additional information at all or not so you please utilize this page uh, to plan your work and to effectively maneuver around the entire questionnaire Uh, utilize the unanswered functionality and the review question functionality to uh, to run the questionnaire uh, between uh, colleagues and internally in your departments 
Finally, as you can see, there are two major points which are mentioned here in review and submit page that until unless you have not completed the entire questionnaire, you will not be able to submit your responses and also to review your questions as in the application preview functionality, you again have to complete the entire questionnaire. The moment your unanswered questions become zero and your review questions become zero, there will be two boxes which will appear at the bottom of this table which will give you uh, the option of submit as well as to review your review your application before you make a submission. Once you have submitted your questionnaire, you cannot make any changes. Once submitted, your questionnaire will be frozen and the link cannot be, uh, the link can be accessed, but it will appear in read-only mode. So you can come back to your questionnaire link through that email that uh, you had received. Uh, when you come back on that link, your filled up questionnaire and submitted questionnaire will appear, will appear in read-only mode and you will also be given a link to download your filled up questionnaire which you can later use for your future references as well as during the site assessment stage. Just want to remind you that the last day to submit your questionnaires is 10th June and uh, in between if you have any queries or any questions beyond this webinar, you can always get in touch with the awards team and uh, you can also write in to me at uh, swati.pande at cii.in. I will now close the session and I will move on to the question and answers uh, from all of you. So uh, I will read out each and every uh, uh, the question that you have written in your panel and I will uh, answer each question one by one. Recording stop for a Question and answer should be ready. Thank you.